Bring Up the Bodies is a shorter, more concentrated, fiercer book than Wolf Hall. The action takes place over a period of only nine months. It takes up where Wolf Hall left off and it goes to May 1536 to the destruction of Anne Boleyn. And it concentrates on the last three weeks of that period, during which time the Boleyn's empire begins to crumble. Henry and Anne quarrel. She is arrested. She's tried. She's executed. Anne Boleyn remains one of the most intriguing characters in English history. You really can't add her up. She's intelligent, she's powerful, she has a driving will and huge sexual magnetism. This is what made her Queen of England and this is what destroyed her in the end. We don't know whether Anne was guilty of adultery. It seems unlikely. I don't try to unravel the whole mystery for the readers, but I try to imagine what it might have been like to be alongside her during those last few weeks of her life. The speed of events, the fear, the poisonous atmosphere, and the horrible, tragic conclusion. Bring Up the Bodies tries to capture the atmosphere at court during those few weeks of Anne's destruction. The atmosphere is poisonous. Everyone's looking over their shoulder. Rumour pervades the whole place. Who will be arrested next? What will they be charged with? Will Henry, will he actually kill his own wife? Will he reprieve her at the last moment? Rumour and gossip are running rife. Who will betray their friends? And when the tragic conclusion is reached, that isn't actually a conclusion, it's just a beginning. A sacrifice has been made of Anne, but there is a price to be paid, both by Henry, by Thomas Cromwell, and the terms of that sacrifice will take us on beyond Bring Up the Bodies into the third book.